contracts. This is our fifth video lecture for the probability class, the graduate level class. And last time, uh, we left off with an example of taking the expected value of a function of a random variable x with a random variable as a discrete random variable. And that's going to be needed for us and that we're going to uh, now take a look at a particular aspect of random variables that we're going to be interested in called the variance. And so let me go ahead and get started with the definition of what the variance is for a random variable. So um, given a random variable x, the variance of x is denoted by bar of x and given by the variance of x, this is its definition, equals to the expected value of x minus the expected value of x to be squared. So it's the expected value of that function. The variance of x Here's what it does. Uh, measures, in some sense, now, the amount of spread Turns out that the definition isn't always the best way for the variance of x to calculate the variance for a random variable, and so we have a fact that helps us do calculations. So as a fact, the variance, I don't say, for a discrete random variable. The variance of x uh, is equal to the expected value of x squared minus the expected value of x to b squared. And I'll prove that fact for you. Okay, so we're going to let x be a discrete random variable. Then, by definition, the variance of x, that's equal to the expected value of x minus the expected value, oops, of x to b squared. And so this is the expected value of a function of the random variable x. And don't forget, the expected value of x is just a constant. So this is equal to the expected value, if I um, expand, boil out that x minus expected value of x, what I get is x squared minus 2x times the expected value of x, and then plus the expected value of x to b squared. And then um, that uh, would be equal to, because we're talking about discrete random variable, it would be equal to a sum over the uh, x values where f of x is greater than zero, of x squared minus 2x times the expected value of x, uh, plus the expected value of x to b squared, all that times f of x, where, of course, f of x is the probability mass function of x.
line. Okay? So that will be equal to the sum over all output x values of it would be x squared by the distributive of x. Um, and it would be minus 2x expected value of x times f of x. And it would be plus, it would be the expected value of x to be squared times f of x. And that's what we have. Now I can break this sum of this addition and subtraction to three different sums, and that's what I'm going to do. So it's the sum over x squared f of x um, minus the sum over the x values of 2, and I'll rewrite this the expected value of x times x, f of x, and then plus here's another sum over x of the expected value of x squared f of x. which is, uh, now can be rewritten. Well, by the formula that we gave for the expected value of g of x, one can see that this is nothing more than the expected value of x squared. Now, the expected value of x is a constant, so it's 2. It doesn't depend on x, okay, over the sum. So I can pull those out, and I still have the sum as x runs from whatever it does of x f of x plus this is a constant the expected value of x squared is. so I pull it out times the sum over all x values of f of x over all x values where f of x is to the of zero that's what I have this is equal to the expected value of x squared so I'm not messing with this one minus 2 times the expected value of x squared here, the sum over all x values where f of x is greater than 0 of x times f of x, well, that's the definition of the expected value of x. And then plus, here's the expected value of x um, to be squared. And then if we sum up over all x values that big x can take on of f of x, one of the facts about the PMF is if you take that sum, you get 1. That's kind of convenient. So this is equal to the expected value of x squared. This is minus 2 times the expected value of x times the expected value of x. Well, that, that's the expected value of x squared. And here we have plus 1 times the expected value of x to be squared. The last two terms are like terms, so we end up getting the expected value of x squared minus the expected value of x to be squared. And that's what we were trying to show. That's what the fact said. So we've proven that fact, and now let's do an example illustrating computing the variance of x. So let's go back to that card example we've had several times. So let's say a card is selected. at random um, from a standard day. Um, let's let x of a heart equal to minus 1, x of a black card be equal to 3, and x of a diamond be equal to 2. Somebody might say, well, that's a squared random variable, and they might say, fine, the variance of x. Well, we had already worked with this problem somewhat, and so... Um, the variance of x by our fact is the expected value of x squared 
minus the expected value of x b squared. And, and so I need to calculate both of these. We'd already calculated this part. But let's note that the expected value of x squared by that definition of the expected value of a function of x, we see, with a discrete case, this is the sum in our particular problem. As x runs from, I think it was minus 1, 2, 3, of x squared, that's g of x, times f of x, the PMF. It's been a while since we looked at the PMF. But here, this is going to be uh, minus 1 squared times f of minus 1, plus 2 squared times f of 2, and then finally, plus 3 squared times f of 3. That's going to be equal to 1 times f of minus 1. Well, that's the chance that we got x equal to minus 1. That's the chance that we got a heart. That's 1 fourth. Plus 4 times uh, f of 2. f of 2 is the chance we got a diamond. That's also 1 fourth. Plus 9. f of 3 is the chance that we got x equal to 3. That's the chance of a black heart. That's 1 half or 2 fourths. That's equal to, let's say, I think it's one fourth plus uh, four fourths, and then uh, plus, I think it's uh, uh, 18 fourths, which equals to 23 out of four. Now, very quickly, the expected value of x involved in our formula for calculating the variance. Um, well, that's going to be minus 1 times f of minus 1 plus it's going to be 2 times f of 2 plus 3 times f of 3. We've calculated this before. The answer was 7 fourths. Let's make sure. That's minus uh, 1 fourth plus this is um, f of 2 is uh, 1 fourth. So it's 2 over 4 plus 3 times uh, 2 over 4, that's 6 over 4. That does equal to 7 fourths. So the variance of x is equal to 23 over 4 uh, minus 7 over 4 to be squared. That's the expected value of x squared, which we have right here, minus the expected value of x to be squared. So that ends up being 23 over 4 minus 49 over 16. I have to multiply both of these by 4. That's 92. Uh, minus 49 over 16, that's equal to, I think that that is 43 over 16. And so that's how we can show an example of computing the variance for a discrete kind of variable. What I want to do for the remainder of this video lecture is I want to look at some specific classified uh, discrete random variables. And uh, we're going to start off with the most simplest, and uh, we're going to give a little prefacing information for the most simplest discrete random variable uh, by saying a Bernoulli, as a definition, a Bernoulli um, experiment. is a random experiment with only two possible outcomes and we call them success and failure. where 
the probability of success is equal to little p. So this probability of success is equal to little p. That means the probability of failure. is 1 minus p. So that's a Bernoulli experiment. Uh, lots of things can be uh, the Bernoulli experiment. One easy example is one where you flip a coin and you say, well, if I got heads, we're going to count that as a success. If I got tails, we're going to count that as a failure. And the probability of success is All right, so uh, let's give a definition for the random variable I'm going to talk about. So a Bernoulli random variable is a random variable. given by x of success well that's equal to 1 and x of failure that's equal to 0. Now we have learned that associated to a discrete random variable and that's what a Bernoulli random variable uh, there is this probability mass function. So, um, as a fact, the probability mass function for a Bernoulli random variable is defined to be p to the x times 1 minus p to the x, where the, probab uh, the probability of x equaling to 1 is equal to little p. That's the probability of success. You know? So these are the little p's. And here I should say, and x could be equal to 0 or 1. So the output values for big X are either 0 and 1, you see that. And this makes sense for the probability mass function. How so? Well, remember what the probability mass function is. It's, uh, it's defining output values for big X. And so L of 0 is equal to the probability that X equals 0. That's the probability of a failure. That's 1 minus P. If X is 0, P to the 0, that's 1. One. Uh, here I messed up. It's 1 minus x, we need to make that change. So p raised to 0 when x is 0 is 1. 1 minus p raised to 1 minus x, that's going to be 1. So we just, uh, that's 1 is the exponent, so we just get 1 minus p. So f of 0 is 1 minus p, that is the chance of a failure. And when x is equal to 1, we are asked for the probability that x, big x, is equal to 1. That's the chance of a success. That will be equal to p to the 1, which is just p, 
And then one minus P to one minus one, that's P, one minus P to zero, that's just one. So you just get two. So that's what that is. And what I'll tell you is that if we add those two up, P and one minus P is the output values for little f of x, we do get one. One p of x times one minus p to one minus x does equal to uh, it's one minus p plus p, which equals to one. And that I make that note because I'm trying to um, make sure that the PMF that I have written here satisfies one of the main facts for a PMF. That is, if you sum them up over all output values possible, you get one. Well, um, we also have the characteristics of a random variable that we're going to look at. It's an ex uh, the expected value that's varying. So here, as a fact, if x is a Bernoulli random variable, then the expected value of x is equal to little p to the probability of success. Let's prove this fact. So let x be a Bernoulli random variable. And let me introduce some language here. With parameter P, okay? The parameter P in this case is the chance of success. Then uh, the expected value of X, that's what I'm interested in. Remember, that's the sum over all output values, that's 0 to 1, of X times F of X. Well, that would be equal to 0 times F of 0 plus 1 times F of 0. Well, 0 times something is just 0. Uh, I'll write this out. This is 0, and then this will be a chance of failure, which is 1 minus p, plus 1 times p. And of course, 0 times something is just 0. 1 times p is just p. That's the proof. Very simple. The last fact that I'll give for a Bernoulli random variable is if x is a Bernoulli random variable, Then the variance of x, well, that's equal to p times 1 minus p. That's what's been proven that. So the proof is we're going to let x be a Bernoulli random variable. Then the variance of x by our formula is equal to the expected value of x squared minus the expected value of x all to b squared. So I need to calculate both of these items. Well, we really already calculated this one. So I need to know what the expected value of the quantity x squared is. Let's look at it. Well, what is equal to is the sum as x goes from 0 to 1 of x squared 
uh, times f of x, which equals to 0 squared times f of 0, plus 1 squared times f of 1. Well, uh, that's equal to uh, 0 times 1 minus p, plus 1 times p, which equals to p. So the variance of x, where x is Bernoulli, is expected value of x squared, well, we just found that to be p, minus expected value of x, which is p, so we need to square it. Now, p can be factored out, and we're left with p times 1 minus p. And that's what we want to show. Well, let's look at an example of a Bernoulli random variable. So as an example, let us consider um, a card is selected at random from a standard deck okay. uh, let x of a heart be equal to 1 and x of a non-heart be equal to zero. Okay. Then x is a renewed random variable with parameter. P equal to 1 4. So the chance of success of getting a heart is 1 out of 4 because there's 13 hearts out of 52 cards. So PMF in this case is F of X equal to, it will be 1 4 times uh, raised to the X times 3 fourths raised to the 1 minus X, where again, the x values are 0 or 1. The expected value of this random variable is just going to be 1 4, that's p, let me write down that's what I'm thinking, it's p, which equals to 1 4, and the variance of x, well, that's p times 1 minus p, which in this case is 1 4 times 3 4. So that's an example. Well, based on a Bernoulli random variable, we can define another random variable, and it's a little bit more uh, advanced, a little bit more complicated, maybe a little bit more useful. Okay, so here's the definition. A binomial random variable. So this is our second random variable. This is true random variable. X is a discrete random variable. Now, I don't like the way I say this. Uh, I should do it a little bit. Let's say, suppose a Bernoulli experiment is repeated in independent uh, time. So you keep doing the uh, Bernoulli experiment in over and over, n number of times, and each time that you're doing it, 
what happens doesn't depend on anything that's happened previously. Let x count the number of successes that occurred in the end trial. Then x is a binomial random variable. Well, let us look at the PMF for a binomial. So as a fact, if X is a binomial random variable, Then the PMF of X is F of little X equal to N choose X. Oh, with, I'll say, N trials. So it's N choose X, P uh, raised to the X. 1 minus p raised to the n minus x, where um, p, where the probability of success equals to p, and x, so x count uh, is the outcome values for big x. What does x do? Big X do. He counts the number of successes. So we did the, the experiment n times. The least amount of successes we could have had was none. And then you could have had one, two, but the most number of successes you could have had was n, the number of times you did the trial. All right, I want to give the, uh, so here we say X is binomial with parameters. N and P. All right, um, I want to give some idea of why this is the um, probability mass function for a binomial random variable. So let's look at F of some particular little x. That's the probability that big X is equal to that little x. That's the probability that you had a little x number of successes in the end trial. So let's say we had, I don't know, six trials. Okay, so here's six trials. And someone said, okay, uh, what's the chance within the six, you know, six number of times that we did it uh, that we had, let's say, two successes on it? So here's what we'd be thinking. We'd be thinking, well, one way that I could have two successes is that it could have been a success here, or success here, and then the other four could have been failures. Now the chance of this happening because of independence. The problem of success on the first trial is P. The, and then we multiply it by the probability of the success on the second trial, which would be P. And then we have the probability of failures four times. So it's 1 minus P times 1 minus P times 1 minus P times 1 minus P. And that would be equal to P squared times 1 minus p to the 4, which, if you will, that's the same thing as p squared times 1 minus p uh, to the uh, number of times we did it, which is 6 minus 4. And so the p to the x, the, uh, the x was 2, the number of successes, 1 minus p to the n minus x, that's exactly what's in. And then the question becomes, 
Why do we have this n choose x in front? Well, remember, if I just said f of 2, and we had uh, two, that means two successes, and here our example was we had six trials. This was just only one way in which we could get two successes. We have a lot more ways that we could get two success. We could have had a success, failure, success, failure, failure, and failure. That's another one. And so we add that probability to this number that we got. Well, how many such ways could we have two successes um, out of the six trials? Well, what we're doing here is we're just picking out the six spots, two of them to be successes. And so the number of ways that can be done is n or 6 choose 2. n choose x in general. And so that's why this is the PMF for a, a binomial algebraic test. Well, I want to recall something that might be new for you, but maybe not. There's something called the binomial theorem. And here's what it says. So I'm just going to write it down on the board. I'm not going to prove it for you. The binomial theorem says, it says that x plus y raised to n, where n is an integer, is equal to the sum as k runs from 0 to n of n choose k, x to the k, y to n minus k. In fact, this fact, the binomial theorem, can be proven, and this is a true fact for all n and some natural numbers, it can be proven by using induction. I'm not going to prove it for you, but I'm going to use it. So I said recall, it might be new to you. Uh, note, if I look at the sum of f of x, as x runs from 0 to n, where f of x is the PMF of a binomial random variable. That's the sum as x runs from 0 to n of, this is n choose x, then it would be p to the uh, x, 1 minus p to the n minus x. And if you look at these two sums, they're identical, except uh, with the one modifications that here I have the index being k, but I have the index here being x. That's irrelevant. They're exactly the same. And so the output, and also I have the difference that x, the row of x in this sum is p, and the row of y is 1 minus p. But the outcome is going to be right here, where x is p plus y is 1 minus p. And then that's going to be raised to the n. But if you look at that, p plus 1 minus p, p minus p, that's nothing. So you just get 1 to the n. But 1 to the n, no matter what n is, is 1. And so what we've proven is that the sum of the PMFs, uh, the sum of the output values, um, sum over the output values of the PMF for a binomial random variable, that does equal to 1. And that's uh, supposed to be the case. It has to use one of the characteristics. Of the PMF. Well, the next thing we'll do is look at what the expected value for a binomial is and its variance. And then we'll do an example. So it's a fact. Uh, if x is a binomial random variable, with parameters n and p, then the expected value of x is equal to n p. Okay. 
Uh, I'm going to prove this fact, but I'm going to take a second. I want to tell you that if you remember for a Bernoulli random variable, the answer for the expected value is just P. That means that N could be considered for a Bernoulli N equal to 1. And that's exactly right. In a Bernoulli random variable, we just do the experiment one time. For a binomial random variable, we do the experiment N independent times. And so a, bi a Bernoulli random variable is a binomial random variable with N equal to 1. So this is kind of more of a generalization of a Bernoulli random variable and, and the binomial is. And the, uh, the Bernoulli is just a specific example of the binomial random variable. Anyway, we won't prove this fact. This fact is a little bit messier to prove, but it's still doable, and we're going to do it. So here's the uh, proof. We let x be binomial with parameters uh, n and p. Then, the expected value of x, well, I think that is, that's the sum over all output values. Well, that means x runs from 0 to n of x times f of x, where f of x is the PMF for the binomial. So that's equal to the sum as x runs from 0 to n of x, and this will be n choose x, uh, p to the x, 1 minus p to the n minus x, and that's what we are. And the next thing I'm going to notice is when x is 0, when x is 0, um, it has 0 times something in the first term of this sum. Well, that wouldn't contribute anything, because 0 times something is 0. When you add 0, you don't get anything uh, contributed. So I'm going to rewrite this. It's the same thing as the sum of x runs from 1 to n of x, n, choose x, p to the x, 1 minus p to the n minus x. Well, that's equal to the sum as x runs from 1 to n. Uh, this will be x, and here the n choose x is n factorial over n minus x factorial times x factorial. That's p to the x, 1 minus p to the n minus x. So I'm just expanding uh, using the formula for what it means to be n choose x. This x and one of the x's here the x involved in x factorial will cancel. This sum as x runs from 1 to n. Here I would have n factorial over n minus x factorial. This will be x minus 1 factorial. Remember what x is factorial is x times x minus 1 times x minus 2, all the way down to 1. And so this x and that x will cancel, and I'm just left with x minus 1 times x minus 2 all the way down to 1. And that's x minus 1 factorial. And then here's p to the x, 1 minus p to the n minus x. Well, one thing I notice is that n and p, they don't depend on the x. Um, so I, I could take them out. So I am going to take out an n and a p. This will be the sum as x runs from 1 to n. This will be n minus 1 factorial. Again, same type of logic. N minus X factorial, X minus 1 factorial. Here I'm going to have P to the, I took out 1, so it's X minus 1. And then I'm going to write this as 1 minus P to the N minus X. And then I'm going to get one more line in here. This is equal to NP. And what I'm thinking is this looks somewhat like N minus 1, choose X minus 1. To clarify that, so we see it very clearly, so sum as x runs from 1 to n, here, this is n minus 1 factorial over, it, this is the same thing as n minus 1, minus the quantity x minus 1 factorial. So I'm just writing down the n minus x is n minus 1 minus the quantity x minus 1. So 2 minus 1 will cancel each other out. And in the bottom, we'll still get an x minus 1. And, oh, yeah. Here, I'm going to rewrite this as P 
to the x minus 1, and the 1 minus p, 1 minus p, and here I'm going to write this down as n minus 1 minus the quantity x minus 1. Now, I'm going to let a change of variable be made. I'm going to let k be the x minus 1. And that's all. So it's equal to n times p, that's what we have for, times the sum. Now, what's the sum? Is uh, x ran from 1 to n. Well, I'm going to let k run from 1 less than that. So k can run from 0 to n minus 1. And then that big fraction that we had, you can see that that's n minus 1, choose x minus 1. This would be P. Oops. You know what? Let's don't make this substitution yet. Let's let this still be x be 1 to n. Here we have n minus 1. Let's just write it down here. And then this was x minus 1. We're just substituting what I'm doing at this stage. is substituting in for that fraction from the previous line as a uh, combination. This is P to the, uh, it was x minus 1, 1 minus P. I'm rewriting this as n minus 1 minus the quantity x minus. Let's leave it like that. And then let's make the substitution. So here, let's let k be equal to x minus 1. Then the sum becomes, this expression becomes, uh, n times p times the sum. Again, what we're doing is we're letting k run from uh, 1 less than what x did. So k will run from 0 to n minus 1. This is n minus 1. Choose, well, x minus 1 is the same thing as k. Choose K. Here it's P to the X minus 1, but X minus 1 is the same thing as K. So I'm getting the same sum, I'm just making it look different. Then 1 minus P, this is N minus 1, minus K, because X minus 1 is K. What this quantity looks like right here, what I'm summing up, it looks like the PMF for a binomial random experiment with parameters for a binomial random variable with parameters p and n minus 1 trials. Okay, that's exactly what it is. And I know that sum is 1. So that's equal to n times p times 1. Okay. Or you could think of it using the binomial theorem on this, and you'll get that you get 1. So that's equal to n times p. And that's the p. So the expected value of a binomial random variable as a fact, move right along. If x is a uh, binomial random variable, with parameters p, sorry, n and p, then the variance of x is equal to n times p times 1 minus p. Okay. That's exactly uh, p times 1 minus p was the variance of uh, Bernoulli. I'm going to multiply by n, which will give you n times. Let's prove that fact. So proof is going to let x be binomial um, with parameters n and p. Then the variance of x by the fact 
Well, that's equal to the expected value of x squared minus the expected value of x to b squared. That's equal to, well, I don't know what the expected value of x squared is. I know what this guy is. It was mp. But I don't know what the expected value of x squared is. Well, that's going to be the sum as x runs from 0 to n of x squared uh, times f of x, which equals to the sum as x runs from 0 to n of x squared and then this will be m choose x, p uh, to the x, and then 1 minus p to the n minus x. So that's equal to, well, again, let's notice that when x equals 0, the first term of this sum is 0, so that doesn't contribute anything. So might as well just sum from x prime from 1 to n of x squared, n choose x, p to the x, 1 minus p, to the n minus x. And so I'll say, well, really, that's the sum as x runs from 1 to n of x squared. Uh, here, this would be n factorial, n minus x factorial, and then here's an x factorial, and then we have p to the x, and then time, 1 minus p to the n minus x. X here and X here will cancel, much like what we had before, previous proof. So um, that's equal to the sum as x runs from 1 to n of x times n factorial over n minus x factorial. And here I would have x minus 1 factorial. And then we have p to the x, 1 minus p to the n minus x. Again, I'm going to take out an n and a p out of the sum. Oops. This will be the sum as x runs from 1 to n. Um, here I have um, x times n minus 1 factorial. Here I'm going to write this other bottom. Let's pull the x out. This other bottom, I'm going to pull out, it's n, uh, I'm going to rewrite this, it's n minus 1, as we did before, minus x minus 1 factorial, so that's n minus x, that's what's in brackets here, factorial, and here's x minus 1 factorial. This is p to the x minus 1, I'm going to rewrite this as 1 minus p to the n minus 1 times minus x minus 1. Again, we're going to make a substitution here. We're going to let um, k uh, be equal to, well, before I do that, let's say that's the same thing as the n times p times the sum as x runs from 1 to n of x. And here we can rewrite this as a, a choosing of n minus 1 choose x minus 1. So we have p to the x minus 1, 1 minus p to the n minus 1 minus the quantity x minus 1. As we did before, we're going to make a um, variable substitution. Uh, let that be equal to k, and k be equal to x minus 1. So this is going to be equal to n times p times the sum. Again, k is 1 less than what x runs from. So k is going to run from 0 to n minus 1. Here's x. Well, x, wait a minute. X is k plus 1. If I solve for x from right here, this is going to be an n minus 1 choose k, p to the k, 
And then 1 minus t to the n minus 1 minus k. Close to b. That's equal to NP, and here I'll break this up into the sum as K runs from 0 uh, to N minus 1, that's what we are. Uh, it will be, if I distribute, distribute the K plus 1, it'd be K times N minus 1, choose, um, it's choose K. And then it's p to the k, and then uh, 1 minus p to the n minus 1 minus k, and then we have plus, and then we have n, we have 1 times, because it's k plus 1, it's k plus 1 times this one. So it's n, 1 times this guy, n minus 1 choose k, p to the k, 1 minus p to the n minus 1 minus k. And that's equal to NP, and here we'll break this up into two sums. Well, it's NP times this sum. Uh, N uh, minus 1 choose K, P to the K, 1 minus P to the N minus 1 minus K. Uh, plus, it would be this sum, uh, so it's n times p times this sum, k runs from 0 to n minus 1, of n minus 1 choose k, p to the k, 1 minus p to the n minus 1 minus k, I think I snuck it in. This is equal to np, now what this sum gives, as k runs from 0 to n minus 1, it's k, that's the index, times this quantity here, which is really the PML of a binomial random variable with parameters n minus 1 and k. And so uh, what we get is that this is going to be times, well, what would be the, this is the expected value of a binomial random variable with parameters n minus 1 and p. So this is n minus 1 times p. That's what I did plus n times p times, well, this is just 1. Okay? This part is just 1. It's the PML, this is right here, it's the PML of a binomial random variable with parameters p and n minus 1. So that's just 1. So let's see, this is n p, if I factor out n p, I would have uh, n minus 1 times p plus uh, 1. Maybe I should have done that. Let's, let's just keep going. Let's see what happens. So this is np times np minus p plus np. This is. this is n squared p squared uh, minus np squared plus np. That's what I get. What is it that I just found? Well, what I just found was the expected value of x squared. So n squared, p squared, minus n p squared, plus n p. So I had made a mistake. So let's uh, use that to compute. The variance of the binomial. So, the variance of x, which, let's remember, is the expected value of x squared minus the expected value of x to b squared. I just computed this. 
it is n squared p squared minus n p squared plus n p minus, well the expected value of x was n p and we need to square it, so n squared p squared. So these two guys cancel each other out and what we're left with is n p minus n p squared. And then I can factor out an n p and when I do, I'm left with 1 minus p. That's what we're supposed to get. That's fantastic. Okay. We'll conclude by looking at one example. So, uh, so as an example, let's say a card is randomly selected. from a deck of cards, from a standard deck. Its suit is noted for whether it's a heart, diamond, gloves, or spades. The card is returned to the deck, and the deck is reshuffled. This is done five times. We're going to let X count the number of parts. Then x is a binomial random variable and one, the PML is f of little x, that's going to be equal to five choose x, so n is five. It's going to be uh, P, which is going to be one fourth, chance of being a part, uh, times um, a raised to x, times three fourths, raised to the five minus x. And here, x is equal to zero, one, two, three, four, and five. Two, the expected value of x, well, that's in P, and that's equal to five times one fourth. And thirdly, the variance of x, well, that's equal to n times p times 1 minus p, and that's going to be equal to 5 times 1 fourth times 3 fourths, and that ends up being 15 minutes. All right, that's all I wanted to do during this lecture. Thank you very much for your time and patience.